covers for the back. So I want the adjustability. I want to be able to really adjust. I'm going for about a 0 0.04 action um, on height on the string uh, to the top of the frets. Um, so in order to really make sure I've got everything the same from front to back, I decided to go with a brass adjustable nut up front and it's and not a stationary it's got rollers on it um, hopefully that takes a little bit of tension there's nothing stationary grabbing those strings um, maybe it plays a little bit better maybe it doesn't we'll find out that's easy to change out the problem i did run out in with that is the nut that i chose um, it has a plate that goes on the bottom of it and then it, the nut sits on top and the nut is actually free floating there's no screws to screw the plate down. I think I am gonna glue it down. There's no instructions that come with it. I ordered it off of uh, off of Amazon. And uh, I'll show you guys that when I set it in. I'll show you the nut when I set it in. But it is a little wider than the original nut that was in there. Um, so what I did is I laid the plate down and I took a pencil and, and outlined it up front. Then I took a really sharp X-Acto knife uh, so that the plate doesn't sit at an angle and I cut on my line the veneer back. I cut the veneer back on here so that the plate will sit down on the wood of the neck and not be propped up on the veneer and sit nice and level. Another thing is, is the nut is actually pretty high. So that helped me set the nut down a little bit and I wanted that plate flush. So it really comes up with the veneer top and just edges and rolls right into that plate, that plate fits down inside there. The nut is pretty high. I'm, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to come back and throw it in the CNC and mill it down just a little bit on the bottom in order to reduce the height a little bit. We're gonna find that out. Uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to put it in, string it, see what the adjustment is on it, take it back out, decide what I'm gonna do. But in order to kind of help get it lower, I wanted to recess the plate down as well. So once I cut the veneer in, I actually took a file and lowered that down just a little bit in order to be able to set that plate down flush with the top of the veneer. So that way the nut is sitting at the original height the original nut was sitting at um, with the additional plate in there sitting below that level. So that's what I did there. Uh, that wasn't too hard. I hate file work. Um, I do a lot of work with metal and wood. Um, I do a lot of file work. File work is probably my most hated because to me it just seems more inaccurate. There's a chance of rolling, so you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, pay attention not to get into the neck here uh, while you're doing it and not to overdo bringing the uh, veneer back uh, off that. So that actually turned out pretty good. I'll show you guys that when we set in. Uh, and then we, of course, we have, I've set the neck in here now. I really debated for a long time, do I set the neck before I paint um, and do the finish, or do I do the finish and then put the neck together? Most of the videos, I would have to say 95% of the videos that I see online are people painting the body and the neck separate. They mask off the areas that's going to glue so they don't get any... Um, lacquer on there or finish on there so that the glue sticks but they do it separate and I, I've never messed with lacquer before um, that's just something I don't use in my business um, I, I do a lot of woodwork but I usually work with a lot of the boiled linseed oils and waxes um, uh, rather than lacquers I'm liking a lot of the lacquer finishes, so I might actually start using that in my normal business. But the main thing I was worried about, and I did see it in one video, where when they did the finish first, then they went to go glue everything together, it actually stuck to the lacquer in the back, and when he peeled it off, it ruined his finish. Um, and I don't wanna have to go back and touch it up after I do all that work. So I was scared of that. I think that has a lot to do with the drying of the lacquer as well and having patience and making sure that it dries for a good week to two weeks before you do anything with it. The other major thing that I was battling is this seam right here as it goes from the neck in, sorry, the body into the neck here. I wanted that to be seamless. I wanted it not to feel it at all. Right now I'm running my fingers over it and I cannot feel a transition whatsoever. If I were to sand that first, then finish it, um, you're always going to feel an edge there if you finish it before you glue it. So I chose to glue it first, then come back and finish that sanding on that 
Right now it's just gorgeous smooth um, and it feels super good. Um, and then I figured I'll just mask the neck off all the way around here when I do everything else. So um, the glue that's in here actually pressed out pretty good. We'll talk about that. Um, you know, I cleaned everything up on here, but I was able to go in and sand everything down after that so that I know that everything is nice and smooth there. So, um, anyway, so I was, uh, so I decided to glue first before finish. Um, another thing I was worried about is, is everybody's always talking about, um, making sure that the neck is in straight neck alignment, fingerboard alignment. I was really worried about that. That's been a worry that I've had ever since I thought about building a kit. How do I get the neck straight? Uh, I hear about a lot of guys building guitars and then taking them back in to get the neck straightened. Um, Gibson doesn't have that problem because they actually put the neck in before they cut all the humbucker holes so that everything is perfectly aligned with the neck. We don't have that option here. Uh, but again, Stumac is supposed to be the number one kit on the market. And I know the older gentleman that does a lot of the videos, the how-to videos on Stumac, um, he stated that he used to work for Gibson. So I'm, I'm hoping and I'm relying on all of the expertise and his expertise that uh, is all combined into that Stumac has figured out how to get this straight for me to put it in. Um, when I did the test fit on it, it was surprisingly tight. It was actually pretty tight. Not so tight to where I had to use a mallet or anything to set it, but where I had to use my hand um, and really tap everything together and use some force in order to get that thing in and get it seated. And there was no wiggle side to side whatsoever. Once I got that in, it was really stable once I did the test fit on that. So I was actually really happy with that. It looks just by looking down here that everything is going to line up really well with the humbucker holes. But I, we'll see once we get everything together and I string everything up, that's when everything's going to be able to tell. So one thing I did do is uh, did the test fit. Everything there seemed to be fine, but I went inside and cleaned up inside the cavity. Uh, you can see inside the cavity here, I cleaned up all these lower corners because there was fibers from the uh, leftover from machining that was still connected. And I went in with a razor blade and I really squared those corners up really well. Um, I tried not to dig into the wood too much and just cut it off, but I really wasn't worried about it if I did open that bottom edge up because all of that's going to really seat down with glue and give me an added uh, connection point for the glue as well. Um, I also didn't sand anything down inside of there. I thought it was really rough down inside of there. You can feel down inside of these. It's pretty much raw wood. Um, hasn't been sanded down as much. I didn't sand it down because I wanted that rough texture for the glue to really get into the fibers of the wood and really give me a good strong hold on this thing. Because of course my fear is I get everything done. I hang it up by the head and the body falls off. Um, so that's a lot of work down the drain. Um, so that's why I didn't pre-sand it, but I did cut out all those edges. So I know that all the bottom corners seat, the main worry that I had was it seating flat to where there wasn't too much bow or back bend with the neck. It, it was at a good angle that it was made to be at when I set it down. That's why I cut those bottom edges, covered everything in glue on the inside, pretty, pretty heavy. I uh, made sure everything, you know, got a brush down inside of there, made sure all the corners and everything was all equally covered on both the neck and the inside of the body. And, uh, and then, of course, seated it in. Of course, everything slid in a little bit easier uh, with glue on there as lubrication going in. So I didn't have any problems getting it in, getting it set flat. Uh, I have bought this block from Stumac here because I knew that I was gonna to have to clamp down on it and I don't wanna clamp down on the fingerboard and ruin uh, the uh, frets or anything. So I did get this block, this sanding block, and I took a piece of cork board. Um, I've had these for quite a while, but I originally got them from like Office Depot. Uh, they come in a four pack of 12 inch by 12 inch squares. Uh, my wife calls me a hoarder because I never threw them away. I knew I was gonna use them one of these days and here I am, right? So. Um, I just cut it out the thickness of the block and used double stick tape on there and then sat it down right over that junction, that area that I'm gonna be clamping. 
Then I took another piece of wood, uh, this size actually, I cut it to the same size. I wanted it to cover the whole back so I wasn't just pushing here, I was giving nice good equal force all the way across. And put it in between the board on the back of the body so that I'm not making any impressions into the wood when I clamp it down. Um, I knew I didn't want to get too crazy with the force because I don't want to shove these frets into the wood, but I do know that I wanted a really good force on there in order to be able to hold everything together and squeeze all of that glue, one, the excess out, and two, into all of those fibers. So once I got that done, I went in and clamped. I put two clamps in, uh, one towards the front and then one coming in from the side on this bottom portion here to where I can get that clamp in, and I used wood clamps that ratchet down clamped them down really, really good, um, and then I hung it for a day. I did it about noon, one o'clock, and I took it apart about 9 a.m. the next morning. Um, and then from there, I just kind of did my sanding from there. I didn't put any due pressure. And when it's on the table working, I have this piece of foam here, and I try to keep it up underneath the neck so it's not putting a bunch of force on the head. Um, and the body causing everything to go crazy. Um, so that was gluing it in. It was actually really, really easy. I feel really confident uh, for the fact that it's going to be straight. We're going to find that out. Um, I tried to wipe off the glue as best I can while it was gluing. Of course, this kind of hangs over the edge a little bit, so it's hard to get up underneath of there. And I did that with a wet um, napkin. I use these napkins here that you see I have laid down. Um, I buy those from Ace Hardware in a box. Um, so not just your regular table napkin. <coughs> um, and I got it wet with cold water and I went in and wiped that down, but I didn't go crazy with it because one, I don't want that water to soak through the veneer because it is vacuum pressed on there when it's glued in and I don't want it to disbond any of that and, and peel all of that off. Two, I don't want the water so much water getting on it to where it seeps down into that crack and dissolves or breaks down the glue before it has a chance to dry. So I cleaned it up the best I can without overdoing it. And then when I was done, I came back with a razor blade, that X-Acto knife, um, really, really carefully. And I cut down at an edge here and in at a side here and cut out all the seams all the way around in order to really clean that up um, and get that done. But She's nice and stable. I'm really happy with it. And there it is. There's the head and the neck. And uh, cool. We'll come back and talk about sanding and some other things. So there we are. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video in Chaos Garage. Hit like, share, and subscribe if you guys liked it. And as always, please be kind in the comments. Until next time.